<laughs> Scott Simpson. Thank you, Mr Chairman. It's a pleasure as Chairman of the Local Government and Environment Select Committee to take a call on this bill as it progresses through the House through its uh, committee stages. I want to acknowledge the uh, member, the local member, the Honourable Nikki Wagner, who has uh, ably supported and sponsored this bill uh, under difficult circumstances in a way, because I don't think any local member takes any pleasure at all in bringing to the House a piece of validating legislation. And in the uh, second reading, we heard uh, from a number of people, myself included, who were, I think, unhappy uh, about the uh, uh, prospect of us having to consider it. This is a, um, a, uh, a quite a succinct uh, and short, uh, pithy bill that actually uh, fixes irregularities that relate to payment dates for rates and uh, the authority to impose penalties on paid rates that uh, occurred through uh, a mistake, albeit honest uh, mistake, made by the Christchurch uh, City Council. And um, it's a, a local bill. Uh, the irregularities, as the uh, a sponsoring member uh, indicated, actually were victimless in terms of nobody suffered financial loss or cost. But for the council, actually, they have really just dodged a bullet. Because if, in fact, uh, any ratepayer had uh, decided to bring legal action against the council during any one of those 10 years before the error was discovered, there would have been significant potential for financial loss, uh, not only to council, but to the wider rate-paying group. Now, um, uh, the Christchurch City Council, sir, failed to state in their rates resolution that the rates were payable by instalments. And uh, not only that, but what the payment dates for those instalments might be. Uh, and the penalties, uh, if there were to be any, what, they would, what, what penalties might or might not be added. And so it failed to state uh, some very basic things. Uh, I hasten to add, sir, that uh, these errors occurred some 10 years or more ago, uh, several CEOs ago, and the uh, opportunity to, I guess, uh, uh, seek retribution from the people who are responsible for ensuring that the errors didn't occur has long since passed. However, notwithstanding that, it's my view that the Council should uh, perhaps have been a little more uh, contrite in terms of their submission to the Select Committee. We went and heard uh, uh, the submission. There was only one submission. This was, this was it, sir. It was just a mere two pages from Council. It was the only submission that was received. And, um, uh, uh, I have to say that uh, I think that on behalf of the committee we were singularly uh, underwhelmed by the uh, uh, response or presentation received from the uh, council staff and council law that presented to the select committee in Christchurch on the day that we had the hearing. Sections um, in the bill are actually quite uh, short. Clause 5 validates the payment dates for the rates in a way that uh, didn't occur during the rates motion. Uh, clause 6 validates any penalties that may have been added to those rates uh, through the error and omission that took place some um, 10 years ago. Clause 7 declares that all money received by the Council in payment of the rates and any penalties paid in respect of those rates during the period in which the error uh, was unidentified uh, uh, will in fact be validated and that there would be no potential for recovery from ratepayers who uh, may have felt that those rates had been as they were collected uh, constitutionally in terms of uh, legality uh, illegally by the Christchurch City Council. Now, um, Clause 9 goes on to validate um, the specified rates. Uh, these comprise the Council's uh, uh, UAGC and seven targeted rates where irregularities uh, have been identified in terms of Section 23 of the Act. And if these resolutions were made, uh, uh, so, so the, the purpose of this bill is to validate those resolutions so that uh, the status would be that uh, the, the previous resolutions would then be uh, 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 validated uh, from 2004-05 through to the financial year 2012-13. And so uh, I think that it's fair to say, sir, that in terms of 
uh, um, the impact of this era that occurred in Christchurch City, Council is very lucky to have got away as lightly as they did. This was, uh, this was a period during which time uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Uh, Scott Simpson. This is a period of time, sir, when the CEOs were being uh, paid most generously by the ratepayers, and they were uh, negligent in their role in ensuring that uh, correct motions were passed, that, that the correct financial uh, uh, motions were made available to the elected councillors. And uh, I, for one, sir, felt very unhappy that uh, council actually showed no contrition at all for that. And I acknowledge that the current councillors and current council staff uh, weren't uh, personally responsible, but notwithstanding that, there were very significant Errors and that if they had occurred uh, in other jurisdictions and where uh, members of the public and ratepayers had been perhaps uh, 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 testing of this situation, then uh, there would have been very significant financial cost to council and ratepayers. The legal cost alone would have been enormous. So this piece of legislation uh, affirms that all money received by the council and payment of the rates and any penalties paid in respect of those rates uh, to be and to always have been lawfully paid and received by the council. So what that means, sir, is that there will no longer be an opportunity for any uh, disgruntled or offended ratepayer to bring uh, a, a, a retrospective piece of litigation against council in a way Way that may have uh, allowed council to have become further financially uh, compromised if such a piece of litigation had taken place. And although the funding impact statement for each year of the errors included all the information that was required, so on the, on the actual rates bill, uh, the correct information was there. But notwithstanding that, the formal proper motions had not been passed by council, the elected council laws, the people who are elected by the good citizens of Christchurch to uh, ensure that local legislation, local government legislation is enacted and passed uh, according to law. Uh, that did not occur, and those people were potentially very vulnerable. So this piece of validating legislation ensures that that the errors and omissions made by staff and councillors uh, long gone uh, is in fact put to right. Now, as uh, other speakers have said, Mr Chairman, this House does not like to uh, consider these sorts of validating pieces of legislation. Regrettably, we are all too often put in a position where uh, errors of this sort at a local government level do occur, and then it's up to a local member uh, who has no real um, uh, 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 opportunity to put right the error, uh, has to come to the House, seek the time of the House, seek the goodwill of a select committee, and then put it to the House and we where time and effort is occupied uh, at not inconsiderable cost to the taxpayer, sir, to ensure that things are put right on behalf of the uh, innocent ratepayers of Christchurch. I hasten to add, sir, that this is not a small territorial authority. Christchurch City represents one of the largest council operations in the country, and the level of expectation that rests upon them is surely that at the high end of the spectrum in terms of compliance, in terms of fulfilling their role as local body legislators, and in terms of protecting the rights and interests of the ratepayers. And so um, I'm not in any way um, are going to discount the roles and obligations of sm smaller jurisdictions, of smaller councils, but they, uh, I think, sometimes may not have the same access to legal counsel and the same access to professional advice and uh, information that the very large councils do. Christchurch City Council is a very significant enterprise, uh, uh, an enterprise that is of large size and volume and which pays its senior staff extraordinarily well in order 
to get things right. And on this occasion, over a period of not one year, not two years, not three years, not four, but in fact a whole decade, these errors were not spotted. These errors were not spotted by the highly paid professional staff of council, and then the councillors were not made aware of it. And uh, perhaps worse, to add insult to injury, nor uh, was the error spotted uh, by the auditors who are also charged with ensuring that these kinds of errors don't slip through the cracks. So uh, this is an unfortunate piece of legislation. It's a piece of legislation that I would prefer as chair of the committee we did not have to bring to the House and I uh, commend it to the House with regret.